This video explains the universe as a continuum of continuous energy exchange or continuous creation. The mathematics of this theory is quite easy to follow because it represents the geometry of a three-dimensional process. Therefore it can be explained using diagrams with the angles and curvatures of the diagrams representing the forces that form the ever-changing world of everyday life. In this diagram of the complex plane, the zero in the centre represents the moment of now, t equals zero, with the positive numbers marching off into an infinite future, the negative numbers receding into a limitless past. The great symmetry between the positive and negative numbers represents the symmetry between positive and negative charge. We have the imaginary numbers at right angles to the real number line because electromagnetic fields always interact at right angles to each other. When we multiply by the imaginary numbers it forms a rotation with one complete rotation being represented by 2 pi. This gives us a geometrical reason why we find 2 pi linked to the Planck constant. There will always be the uncertainty or probability at the quantum level and in our everyday life because the imaginary number i is the square root of minus 1 representing the rotational symmetry 2 pi that maintains the quantum wave particle function or probability function at t equals 0. One of the most beautiful equations known to man Euler's identity can be placed within the geometry of this process representing the fabric of space and time. The one in Euler's identity represents one photon oscillation and the zero represents t equals zero the moment of now within an individual reference frame. The letter i represents the imaginary numbers and when they are multiplied by pi it gives us a rotation that gives the letter E in the equation the value of minus 1. The plus 1 and the minus 1 cancel out to equal 0 representing the moment of now. The letter E also represents a process of 100% energy exchange that we have in matter-antimatter annihilation. In this theory this represents part of the process that forms the passage of time. The antimatter annihilation represents the past being destroyed with matter having a potential future that is continuously unfolding photon by photon. One complete rotation puts us on another complex plane representing a new moment in time. Mathematically we can think of this as a Raymond sphere with the interior of the sphere representing the three dimensions of our everyday life. With the t equals zero in the center of the sphere representing the moment of now, with every moment in time having an infinite branching point forming a potential infinity of possibilities. This can be based on simple geometry. Within a sphere we have an infinite number of line symmetries that in this theory represents an infinite number of potential timelines or degrees of freedom. Mathematically a sphere is represented as 4 pi and we see 4 pi in the equation for Heisenberg's uncertainty principle representing the dynamic geometry of this process. Basically what we are seeing is the creation or formation of electromagnetic waves or sine waves relative to photons interacting with the atoms of the periodic table. The dynamic geometry of this three-dimensional process can be linked to the work of Michael Faraday with the letter Q in the diagram representing charge. The photon of quantum mechanics forms the movement of charge with the continuous flow of electromagnetic fields. The zero in the center of the diagram represents a new photon of light that radiates out as a sphere. 
The C2, or C squared, in the center of the diagram represents the sphere radiating out at the speed of light, and at any moment in time the surface area of the sphere is relative to the radius of the sphere, represented mathematically by 4 times pi times the radius squared. This is why the speed of light is squared in the equation. We can also have the letter Q in the center of the diagram representing charge because the inner and outer surface area of the sphere forms a movement of positive and negative charge with the inner concave surface forming negative charge and the outer convex surface forming positive charge. The uncertainty and diversity of everyday life is unfolding with the movement of positive and negative charge and the continuous flow of electromagnetic fields. This represents a process of continuous energy exchange forming potential future possibilities. This is a totally interactive process and is relative to the work done by forces external to the system or reference frame. This gives us a totally objective understanding to electromagnetism. We have to do work by putting energy into something to create the potential of our own future. This process is relative to the atoms of the periodic table. But when the temperature is high enough, the atoms break up forming plasma. When this happens, the geometry of this process becomes visible for all to see. This is because with plasma, charge can cover large areas of interstellar space. Therefore, the dynamic geometry we have at the quantum level can be seen. A good example of this is this image from the International Space Station of a candle flame in zero gravity naturally forming a sphere with the surface area of the sphere interacting with the environment. This dynamic geometry can explain quantum entanglement with photons having opposite spin or polarization on opposite sides of the sphere. This is fundamentally a process of spherical symmetry forming and breaking that forms the imperfect symmetries that are visible in nature. We have the chaos and uncertainty of everyday life formed by a geometrical process and this geometry can be seen in our everyday life as the Fibonacci spiral. This is because if the quantum wave particle function or probability function is reformulated as a linear vector. Each new vector is formed by adding the two previous vectors together. This forms a Fibonacci sequence. In this theory, we even have an objective reason for the start of the Fibonacci numbers, with the t equals zero and the positive one and negative one representing the positive and negative of electromagnetic waves, with everything being based on one geometrical process. We have the Fibonacci spiral in nature not because of economy of growth but because it is linked to the broken symmetry that forms the fabric of space and time. Therefore it is formed by anything over a period of time that has a vector. Like the direction of growth of a plant mathematically forms a linear vector. Therefore we see the Fibonacci spiral in plant life. But everything that has a direction or linear vector has the potential to form the Fibonacci spiral. A beautiful example of this is this photo of a girl flicking her head with wet hair. The water comes off her hair and over a period of time forms the Fibonacci spiral. This whole theory can be explained in just one equation representing one simple geometrical process with energy equals mass linked to the Lorentz contraction of space and time. The Lorentz contraction represents the time dilation of Einstein's theory of relativity, with energy slowing up the rate that time flows as an interactive universal process of energy exchange. The letter C represents the speed of light radiating out in all directions forming a sphere of electromagnetic radiation. This has to be squared relative to its radius to give us the surface area of the sphere.
that forms the probability as the future unfolds photon by photon. This is the same uncertainty we have with any future event. At the smallest scale of this process, this is represented mathematically by Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. The brackets in the equation represent a boundary condition of an individual reference frame or set of infinities with an arrow of time for each reference frame. The infinity symbol represents an infinite number of dynamic interactive reference frames that are continuously coming in and out of existence forming our dynamic universe. The momentum of the light will always be at right angles to the surface of the sphere, representing electromagnetic fields always being at right angles to each other. With the negative and positive of electromagnetic waves represented by the inner concave surface and the outer convex surface of the sphere. This concaved and convex curvature is the same curvature of space-time that we find in Einstein's theory of relativity. This can be seen in the time dilation equation. With the speed of light squared linked to the rate that time flows relative to the energy that forms the velocity of an individual reference frame. The only logical and objective understanding we can have of this equation is that energy is slowing up the rate that time flows as a process of continuous creation relative to the energy and momentum of each object. This process starts with a photon of energy with a spontaneous absorption and emission of light that is represented mathematically by the probability function or quantum wave particle function radiating out as an inverse sphere. Because of the spherical geometry the energy diminishes with the square of the radius from the light source. Therefore we have the inverse square law that governs the electromagnetic force and the gravitational force. In this theory gravity is a secondary force to the electromagnetic force. There is no unconnected action at a distance. The surface area of the sphere is relative to the radius squared as a process of continuous creation or energy exchange. Objects don't just free fall towards the greatest mass it is the outward momentum of a universal process of continuous energy exchange that forms the inward force of gravity. The same geometry can be seen in Kepler's third law of planetary motion. When Kepler observed the motion of the planets he found that they moved in elliptical orbits with speed that vary relative to their distance from the Sun. As the planets move along its path, it sweeps out an equal area segment in an equal time. So there is a form of geometrical symmetry, but the symmetry seems to be broken by the shape of the elliptical orbit. In this theory, if the planet's orbits were circular, there would be no variation in speed, and we would have perfect symmetry in movement, space and time. This is because both the electromagnetic force and the gravitational force share the same spherical geometry that forms the inverse square law. A planet in circular orbit would not encounter the time dilation of this process and their speed would remain constant. This dynamic geometry links electrical potential, gravitational potential and quantum potential with the potential uncertainty of our everyday life. This uncertainty is relative to the atoms of the periodic table and the wavelength of the light. In such a theory the mathematics of quantum mechanics represents the physics of time as a physical process, with classical physics representing processes over a period of time as in Newton's differential equations. Thanks for watching. Please share and subscribe.